we have some Kickstarter picks this mm-hmm. week, and this first one, yes, is Farsight. Now, this is a board game, sort of the post-apocalyptic future, you know, there aren't countries, so people are warring against each other, companies. So you play as the two fighting sides. And but it's really cool as you're fighting in the, you know, the post apocalyptic wastelands, not in the cities and stuff. And for your units, they actually are face down in the battle. So you don't know what you're charging into your enemies. It's sort of like Stratego kinda. Okay. And but when they see each other they flip. But you actually have a second little board. And this actually is where you have like spies and snipers. So you can actually mark out areas and like see in advance and stuff or get an advantage against certain units. Is the second little board uh, like like Spectrops where you're like marking? I think, it, yeah, it looked like a small grid where we're marking and stuff. But it's but, not like a different, like the other person can't go there. It's just representing what's yeah, on the field. Yeah, okay. from what I can tell. So I thought it looked, that was really cool because to me it had this whole secretive strategy. The, like the, It has the fog of war built into it, which I don't think we see that often. True, yeah. And because this is a horrific wasteland, there is an environment deck. So lightning bolts may start hitting, you know, like fire may start. So it has that randomness that of war that you, neither side can predict mm. as much. No, that's interesting. Yeah. So I really liked And I should say the main robots are mechs. And what's nice also is the base game is actually about $50. The miniatures are not included. So you don't have to spend that, I think it's like 90 or something altogether. Or 190. Okay. For the whole game, and if you just want the miniatures, you can buy them separately too. How does it work with the minis? Since they're your units are phase, you bring once them you out. flip it out, oh, okay. you, you put the mini on the. Okay. So the cards have cool, and the miniatures are awesome. They're I mean, you can see in the picture behind us, but you can take a look. They're these awesome mechs. Yeah. <laughs> so to me, this looked like a really fun, and I love the hidden style mechanic. So it should hit you if you like, you know, miniatures. The miniatures look cool. It has a cool way of combining mech warfare that doesn't just like. There's mechs, that's it. There's actually like spies and snipers that can sabotage and do things. You know? So I thought it brought a lot of fun, interesting stuff to the table. And of course, just as I like, follow, I love the post apocalyptic world. <laughs> and Farsight is a cool name. Uh, that goes, so like you said, $58 for just the core yeah. set. Which for a big miniatures game, whether you pay for that or not, it's a pretty good relatively standard but lowish price for one of those kinds of games. Right, and but that's without the miniatures. Right, but right. That's right. still pretty nice that they actually separated the two. If you for, want a miniatures game without the miniatures and you don't have as much money, it's like probably a good bet. Because I'll hope maybe they'll sell the war chest separately so you can maybe buy one and then get the other later. That would be nice. That would be nice. Add-ons, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's Farsight. Next, is, this game is called Barker's Row. And it's... Looks spooky. It's... A little, a little spooky, a little eerie. A little it, you are all carnival barkers, hence the name of basically a freak show. And you're, you're the guys who are calling out, come see the magnificent, the stupendous. And that's you're supposed to actually do that. The cards that you play uh, will have words on them. And once you have a complete set, you read all the adjectives on it and reveal your thing. Uh, and basically, there's a deck of different types of cards. You're trying to get enough ones in the center to match the, the suits that you need. So, and then there's this, um, it looks like one of those towers, like one of the strength tests, you know, you hit and the oh, bell yeah. rings and it goes up. And you all start at number four. So in the beginning, for instance, you need to match four of a suit to complete a set. Every time you complete one, you go up a level, and that requires more. more. Okay. So that's sort of their built-in catch-up mechanic. The, the better you're doing, the harder it is to complete something. And when you do complete it, you also have a little set of mini bleachers and these weird little meeples that are the people you attracted to come, and you put them in your seats, and they actually like the things that you're putting on, and they have different abilities. Uh, so it's, it's a really unique concept. It sounds, it sounds super simple. You're really just playing cards, seeing their abilities, choosing from a, from a deck and, and trying to go for points. I think those abilities will add more of the interactive elements and things like that, but the presentation is really nice. No, I mean, that sounds really fun. I mean, that definitely sounds like a game, almost like, almost party-ish, just to hear people like, as you said, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. see the three-eyed mantis <laughs> octopus girl. Right, yeah, it's a little bit of that element of like, um, I'm trying to think of a game, 
like maybe like the uh, what the dinosaur game where you put the bones to dinosaur. What's that game called? Uh, the the bones bone together. war. Or, I'm totally blanking on it. <laughs> I'll put up the box. Yeah. Bone tycoon. <laughs> dinosaur. No, it's, bones. it's right over there too. Uh, the great, the great dinosaur, dinosaur rush, <laughs> where you're kind of. It's not the focus of the game, but it's like a more a fun element that you're like, oh, look at my weird thing I made as well. So that is up for twenty nine. Dollars and finally, this looks like to be another party-ish game. Is it? Yeah, it's called Bone. It uh, stands for uh, boast or not. Yes. <laughs> uh, it, this actually comes from uh, Korea, okay. or Korean designers, and he 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 wanted to focus on the art. But the way it works, and, and the art's beautiful, is pretty much a trick-taking game. Okay. So we each take turns, and there's three different colors. So when you play a color, uh, you, let's say I played a yellow one. Then you play your colors and we look. If everyone played the same color, whoever has the highest number takes the trick. Okay. If there's different colors, there's actually a little, uh, you have three little pods of the other colors, whichever one's on top is the strongest. So if it's blue, red, yellow, blue would be strongest, even if you played a low number. Okay. And then once you win, blue actually goes down because blue's not as cool anymore. You know? <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> but at the end of each round, you see how many tricks people take. And because everyone's drunk, <laughs> It's it's not whoever has the most tricks wins. It's actually whoever you get like more points if you take no tricks. Huh. Okay. So it becomes just more fun of like not just higher numbers, but like trying to trick people and playing different cards so you don't win the tricks. That's that's a fun. I like when games do that. It puts a spin on your traditional way of thinking, <laughs> trying to do the worst. <laughs> and I also I like that the color wheel changes, so it's not just so you have to actually think also like not only if I might win this trick and gain a trick which will hurt me, but that will make that color go down and I ha maybe that will help my hand out because I have a certain, more of a certain color. It kind of remind, sounds like a little bit like a red seven, sort of a little that bit. kind of a thing. Yeah. I mean, I guess a lot of those games sort of have similar uh, color and number playing <laughs> mechanics. <laughs> uh, so that sounds fun, boast or not. I guess you want to or not to win. Uh, it goes for just 20 bucks, mm -hmm. so a li little light party game. Uh, so that sounds fun. If you enjoyed this video, it was just a snippet of our full-length podcast, which you can find on our YouTube channel every week. So please go ahead, like, and subscribe for more board game-related content coming at you in the future. And don't forget to check out RollForCrate.com, where we actually sell a lot of the games we talked about, as well as post news and all our other videos. Until then, I'm Will Keeler. I'm Jonathan Estes, and this is Roll for Crit.